Hi, my name is Guha and I'd like to talk to you today about data commons. Data powers our understanding of the world. There's a lot of data out there, but using it involves expensive repeated data wrangling. Imagine you wanted to understand which California counties were most at full risk from climate change. The data to answer this exists out there, but involves a great deal of work. Now imagine a world where one could begin this exploration with just a natural language query. The Data Commons team has been working towards this vision for the last five years. Our approach is to amortize the cost of the data wrangling, meaning we take a very large number of different data sets from these and many other sources, clean the data, normalize references to places, attributes, and so on, and build a single aggregate knowledge graph, and then provide web APIs to this graph so that many different applications can be built. In terms of what we've actually built, is an open source cloud-based infrastructure for building and running these knowledge graphs together with some visualization tools. Most of the work has been on the data itself, which incidentally is all open across a wide range of topics. It's about 4 billion time series. It's pretty large at this point in time. You can access this data from Google search. Here are some sample queries you can try. Let's try a couple of these. Life expectancy in Cambodia. The top answer is from data commons or fertility rate in Bangladesh or something more complicated like the number of poor Hispanic women in Santa Clara County. You can go click on the explore more button and be taken to a page about Santa Clara County, which has information from a wide range of different agencies all in a single place. One important thing to note is the goal is not to build a single data commons, which hold all the world's data. Rather, it is to have many data commons just the way we have many different websites. We have many different websites, but they all use the same schema, HTML, and the same API, HTTP. Similarly, these different data commons, which can be about different topics, it can be open or closed or behind paywalls and so on, use the same schema and the same for the data and the same APIs. And just like a user can navigate easily from one website to another, a user should be able to join data across these different data commons. Let me give you an example. Feeding America is an NGO that runs a significant number of the food pantries in the US. Over the years, they have developed a meal gap index, which is a measure of food insecurity at the US county level. They have built a Feeding America data commons, which is at datacommons.feedingamerica.org, which contains this meal gap index data. Since this data is now available at a data commons, meaning via the data commons schemas and APIs, it can easily be joined with data in other data commons, such as Google's data commons. And now we can easily answer the query post earlier, which is which California counties are most at full risk from climate change. The x-axis is the food insecurity index, the y-axis is the expected temperature change, and the, the each dot here is a California county, and it's ironic that the counties that are most at food risk are actually the agricultural counties. Or a different correlation, which is just as easy to create now, is food insecurity versus coronary heart disease. Yes, this is a very sad chart, but by making this data so much more easier to access, we can begin to understand what is happening and start taking action. There's a very brief introduction to Data Commons. I invite you to come and learn more at datacommons.org. Thank you.